Here I have four different panels from Calpha Solar. And I'll be performing individual tests on each one of these panels in almost absolutely perfect conditions. Completely clear skies conducted between noon and 2 p.m. Outside temperature was 58 degrees. The panels are facing south. And the tilt for this time of the year was slightly off, but it was nothing that would significantly impact the test. And my goal on this channel is to provide as close as to real life testing situations as possible. And sometimes the products surprise me, other times they're a total letdown. And those lab results that we're seeing on the documentation when we get these products are almost nearly impossible to obtain, especially in solar panels. And there are a lot of factors that determine the performance of a solar panel. Your outside temperature, the azimuth direction that it's pointing in, whether you got clear skies, the shading, the tilt, there's a whole slew of different things that impact your solar performance. And during the preparation of building my own solar system, I spent several years of doing research and educating myself to make sure that I was gonna be able to build a professional grade solar system. And I've shared those experiences with you guys on this channel, and I've talked about what I would change if I had to do it over again. And the reason I bring that up is because had I known about all these different products that were out on the market when I was building my own solar system, maybe it would look different. Maybe I would use different components, maybe different solar panels, maybe different size solar panels, all these different options that you have to consider when you're building your own solar. And when I learned of companies like Calpha Solar, I like to share with you guys so it gives you just one more option in your toolbox. Before I start testing, let me introduce you to the panels. We have the two rigid frames, which are triple black. That means they have a black facing, a black frame, and a black back. This is the 200 watt version, and its little brother back here is the 100 watt version. Next, I'll talk about the two flexible panels that I have. One is the white backing, 100 watt. This one is the black backing, 100 watt. And before I head out and test the panels, let's talk about the specifications for each of them. Let's cover the following items. The model number, the rated power, the efficiency rating, the weight, the dimensions, and I'm also gonna include the spec sheet right over here to the side so you can see other important information you might be interested in. And let's start with the 200 watt rigid. That's the largest panel I have from Calpha Solar. It's the triple black, black front, black frame, black backing. Model number is SPR 200. Rating is 200 watts. The efficiency rating is 23%. The weight is 26.2 pounds. Dimensions is 57.5 by 30.3 by 1.4 inches thick. Next, the 100 watt rigid frame, also triple black. Model number SPR 100, rated at 100 watts. Efficiency, 23%. Weighs 13.4 pounds. Dimensions are 39 by 23 by 1.2 inches thick. I haven't used flexible panels in the past, but after conducting this test, I've become a fan of these and it's surprising of the production that come out of these versus those rigid panels. And I'll show you how that plays out a little later in the video. Next, we have the 100 watt flexible panel, model number SPF 100, rated at 100 watts. The efficiency rate at 23%, weighs only 4.9 pounds and the dimensions is 41 by 21.5 by one eighth inch thick. Consider the connector, it's almost one inch thick. Last, we have the 100 watt solid black flexible panel, and I love the way that this one looks. The model number is SPF 100B, rating at 100 watts, efficiency at 23%, weighs only 5.5 pounds, and the dimensions is 43.3 by 24.1 and nearly one inch thick. When you consider the connector, but only an eighth inch thick when you talk about the panel itself. Let's go ahead and jump outside and start the production test for each one of these. And then when we're finished up out there, we'll come back in because I wanna talk about different mounting solutions that are available for the rigid and for the flexible panels. Let me plug the Opus Mega 2 in and see what we get on a wattage. And we've maxed out right around 150. I've seen it hit 154 a couple of times, but we're consistently right here at this 149, 150. And when I shade the panel like I am right now, you'll see that it's zero. And then it should kick back on. And I also want to test the voltage to make sure we're within the range it says. So we're at 18.6 volts. I don't know if you can see that. And although we didn't reach the maximum of 200 watts or the 20.1 um, open voltage, 
that's acceptable because this should even probably be tilted more like that for maximum production. All right, next we'll move on to the 100 watt panel and see what it does. And again, we don't have this set at the perfect angles. So running at 80 watts at this angle, is pretty good. And as soon as my shadow hits that panel like that, this has got zero on it. And we'll grab the voltage on that panel. 18.83 is what I've seen. And moving right along. Now for our first flexible panel with the white backing. Let's see how that turns out. And let's take a look at that 94 watts out of the 100 watt flexible white backing. And let's see what happens when I get a little shade on maybe half of the panel. Go back right there. Yeah, it zeroed out. And the open voltage is 19.9 volts. And that was really interesting to see that one come in at 95, I think it was, watts out of 100. That's almost unheard of. Let's see what this one does. This one's consistently coming in right at 84, 85 watts. And the voltage on this one is 18.95. The next test I want to conduct is to run these in series and see what we come up with on this power. And we're currently setting it at 175, 174 watts. That's not bad when you're talking 200 is the maximum that you can get out of those and we're producing 174 watts, 175 watts. I'll test the two rigid panels out. That last test that I just conducted with the two rigid uh, frames only producing 182 watts, that was very surprising because that has a possibility of producing 300 total watts and we only got 182 when I connected them together. Now, when I put the other two together, I produced 175 watts out of 200 watts. So those flexible panels really did surprise me a lot. But with that said, that concludes the test for production. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the mounting solutions that we have for the rigid frames and how I would go about mounting the flexible ones. Although this isn't an installation video, I think it's important to talk about the different mounting options that you have on these rigid frames versus the flexible frames. And we'll get to those in just a second, but I'm just using a mid clamp and the end clamps. And I got these from Signature Solar, and these are the bright mount uh, clamps, and you can find them over there. I'll have links in the description below to everything that I talk about today. Uh, so if you're interested in anything, check it out down there. But the mid clamp goes in between your two panels. Now these panels need to be the exact same height or depth, however you wanna say that, width, whatever. It needs to be the same for each panel because if not, like these two panels are not the same because this is 100 watt and this is a 200 watt. This is setting a little thicker than this one. So you wouldn't be able to put these together and do it safely for a long term. Now, if you had two 100 watts, this would go in there and this is adjustable. So your mid clamps on these doesn't matter whether you got uh, the 40 millimeter or the 35 millimeter depth. That doesn't matter because these are adjustable. Your end clamps are very important because these come special for the actual uh, size of the panel themselves. So this one would fit the black panel because it's thinner than this one. I don't know if you can see it from there, but we'll get you close up and we'll take a look at that. But the black one goes over here, perfect. And then this silver one goes over here and that fits perfect to these panels. And Basically, you'd use the bright mount uh, EG4 bright mount solar panel rocking system uh, to mount these and you can do that fairly uh, affordable. You can get into other rocking systems like Iron Ridge. Um, there's just all kinds of them, um, but I don't want to talk too much about that. 
but I do want you to understand that there is so many different options when mounting these. You can mount these in the ground. You can mount these uh, on the roof, however you want to do it, on a trackable solar system. That is a point I need to make. When you're looking at those uh, solar trackers, you want to make sure that your panels are going to fit the solar trackers. If we took a look at my Aptos solar panels, I cannot put those on those the affordable ones that we could afford as residential owners. We can't put those big panels on there. It says that you can put six panels on it. You cannot put six panels of the Aptos solar. You might get two. So now you're talking, you're spending all that money for the tracker and you can only get two panels on it. So I'm getting what, 800 watts. If we went this route, I might be able to get six of these 200 on there and have a 1200 watt tracker. So that makes more sense than buying a big panel just because it's 400 watts versus 200 watts. Because these panels are so flexible and they're so lightweight, this takes a different mounting solution than what the rigid ones take. These got reinforced garments already built into the panel. They have six of them. Yeah, you could put these over bolts, then take a washer and then secure these down by tightening them down. You can fasten them down with screws that have um, fatter heads on them or washers on those as well. Or you could do that plus put a bead of silicone on the back side of this and then secure it to like a roof of an RV or a, a pull behind trailer or something that you're using for a mobile workstation and then secure them down so you have all that wind force is coming when you're going down the highway. It doesn't pull these up or it doesn't start causing this action where it's flapping. It keeps it nice and secure to the roof. So that's how I would secure these. And that's probably what I'm gonna do when I build out my mobile workstation. That's for a little bit down the road. And I'm probably gonna use that black panel like that right there because I have a black trailer. So it'll be discreet on top of it. And then we'll secure it down probably with boats and with the silicone on the back side of it. And my final recommendation is where I would use the flexible panels versus the rigid and the rigid panels over the flexible. If I was building anything mobile or putting this on an RV or a pull behind camper or anything of that sort, I would use flexible panels because I could put them really close to the roof, keep the wind from grabbing underneath of them and pull them off the roof. And they're discreet, they're on top. They actually perform a little bit better than what the rigid panels do and if you're going through an area with large hail or something of that sort, they're gonna take that a lot better than those glass facing rigid panels. But don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the rigid frame solar panels because you would use these more in a stationary application. Let's say for putting on an off-grid cabin, your primary house, if you've got an in-ground mount, if you wanna put these on a roof, you just have a lot more uh, options available to you to mount them to those than you would using the flexible panels. And hopefully I was able to provide you with some type of information that was helpful today. And if I did, could I ask you one little favor? Smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me a lot. I really do appreciate it and I hope to catch you in my next video.